We'll have to get through the show quick tonight. Bear with me. I'm very tired. I may fall asleep at any... <laughs> No, I, uh, I've got a bit of jet lag. You know what that is? Yeah, jet lag. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your help, yeah. sidekick. Yeah. Well, I assume you're going to explain it. Well, I have. I, I was... I, I, you know, when you get on a plane... I was in France yesterday. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I was in France. Uh, where the... Uh, the na naked ladies Naked dance. ladies there. Yeah. And, uh, I was in France, and I, uh, I, I came back via airplane. So you. Uh, so I, so I woke up this morning. Nah, now this is how you know you get jet lag. So I, I was, I was in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh, wide awake, and I'm like, oh no, I have to be awake later on to do this show live. And um, <laughs> and so, um, see when I do that, does it look like I'm got like boobies there? Because, ladies, don't be alarmed. If there were boobies there, I'd be much more attentive than just... I wouldn't be, like, doing that and telling you what happened to me yesterday. I'd be, I'd be much more kind of, oh, this is terrific. Uh, anyway, look, I had, I had jet lag because I was up in the middle of the night watching documentaries on... Well, it, it, CBS wasn't on. Are they on the middle of the night? Well, this show, I suppose, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I was on the... Uh, well, I won't say the name of it, but it, names, it rhymes with Netflix. And I was, so I was watching... <laughs> Oh, Netflix. All right, so I, I was watching documentaries because I was like, I don't know what to do. And I watched a very moving documentary um, about uh, uh, Siberian fur trappers. And it was all in Russian. And I was watching it, and they were like, these fur, and they got subtitles, and the guy's dog was dying and stuff. And I was like, oh. And then, and then I watched, uh, after that, I watched uh, the Katy Perry film. Um, <laughs> And then when she breaks up with Russell, I started crying. <laughs> I was like, man, I, I'm really tired. Man, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it was. It was. They were so upset. Did you, did you get through it? Are you, you all right? Yeah, I'm okay now. But who knows when it could come back again? <laughs> You know, I was pretty upset about the poor Russian man and you know stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Katy Perry. But Katy Perry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> she's actually quite nice. I think she's a lovely woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know when I I know I'll get on with it in a minute. I introduced her at the Grammys once when just after her uh, I kissed a girl came out and I made some joke about her being a lesbian and I know she's not a lesbian and even if she was, you know what? I don't care. Uh, <laughs> But one of our representatives, because it was written on the teleprompter, which is a device that people use in television if they want to be on time, right? And, um, <laughs> and so the, uh, the, uh, the, the, one of our representatives, our manager or agent of some such creepy thing, came over and, uh, and said, hey, uh, you know, Katie isn't a lesbian. I was like, I, I don't give uh oh <laughs> See, I, I must be tired. That's what happened. It's hard to stay up. It's been a long, long day. And you got the Sandman at the door. But hang on, leave the TV on. And let's do it anyway. It's okay. You can always sleep through work tomorrow. Okay. Hey, hey. Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Ford. Go further. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. And then the warm-up community went, that's enough! And then they'll, nothing! 
Got a lot of power, that guy. He's gonna, he, I tell you, he can make you or break you in this town. <laughs> I mean, we call him a warm-up comedian, but as we all know, he's not really a comedian. <laughs> He's a show business bully, isn't he, Jeff? He bullies yeah. these people. You come crazy, come on. You better laugh at this guy or you're going to get it right in the mush. <laughs> in the mush. Yeah, in the mush. Yeah, yeah. in the mush. You're yeah. going to get it right in the mush. That's a word, isn't it? Yeah, it is now. <laughs> is that a dirty word, mush? Can I say mush? Yeah. Like, what if I was saying mush but thinking vagina? Is that okay? <laughs> Because I'm pretty much always thinking vagina, but that's who I am. Hey, I'll tell you something. It is, it, there's very exciting news today. Do you hear about this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Twinkie is back, everyone. The Twinkies are back on the show. Hooray! You know, because... You know, when the hostess went bankrupt, the mascot Twinkie the Kid could be seen on the street corner selling his creamy filling for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> the Twinkies uh, disappeared about nine months. You know what else happened about nine months ago? Over in England, the royal baby was conceived. <laughs> so, coincidence? <laughs> uh, creamy filling? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I was pretty dirty there when I did. Huh? Anyway, Britain is, is in a heightened state of alert right now. Right now, we're on Royal Baby Watch. We've got the graphic for the... There you go. This is, uh, wow. Now, go. Yes, everyone over there is on the lookout for the helpless little bald creature that will someday be the most powerful person in England. But enough about Prince Charles. You see what I mean? Ah, uh, yeah. That was a yeah. job right there. Yeah. Walked up, said my thing, and then went like that at the end. Because yeah. that's when you know, at the punchline, that's what you do. You go like that at the end, and then that's the joke. Yeah, you really, really sell it. That's right. That's how you sell the joke. Yeah. You kind of talk like that at the end. <laughs> And because sometimes it's very difficult to tell if it's a joke if it's just based entirely on the words, is what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, the child of uh, Prince William and uh, Kiki Wigglesworth is due any time. <laughs> and William's brother, Prince Harry, is said to be very excited because he'll be an uncle for the first time and he will no longer be the only one running around the royal palace naked. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth is very excited, and who can blame her? It's been 120 years since a British monarch has been alive for the birth of a great-great-grandchild. Or a great-grandchild. Great-grandchild. Uh, or as Prince uh, Charles noted, 120 years, five months, three days, and... <laughs> 15 hours. How'd you feel, mother? <laughs> Drink your juice. <laughs> That's very dark, isn't it? It's really good. Yeah, it's very dark, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm kidding. Prince Charles is overjoyed, too. There, there's a picture of him greeting the crowds outside the hospital. You got that picture? There he is. He's very excited. <laughs> no, I tell you. Yeah. That is a lovely... See how blue the sky is in Britain over there right now? They've got a... They've got a heat wave. And now, a royal birth is a little different. Even in the delivery room, formal protocol must be followed. <laughs> The doctors will have to refer to William as Your Highness, and uh, Kiki Wigglesworth, or her, um, her, you know, her lady parts are going to be on view. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you can't say you can't say the royal vagina. No. <laughs> so you have to have a, w another name for it. The proper name for it is what is it again, Jeff? The uh, regal baby basket. Regal baby basket, or uh, <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Her Majesty's beef eater. Uh, yeah. yeah. Her, yeah. Her Majesty's uh, Secret Cervix. Her Majesty's Secret Cervix, also. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig, you're dirty. That's right, you just noticed. And they, uh... Now, a British royal baby is no different than just a regular old American baby, except of, you know, crying when it's born. It says, I say, leaving mother's womb was rather traumatic. <laughs> Might uh, someone have a tea towel so I could freshen up or something? Uh, <laughs> Wah. <laughs> Do you like that? That's I good, that. Yeah. Wow, that's, yeah. the, that's the royal baby crying. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Should I do it a bit more jokey so you know? Yeah, I thought that was the royal baby selling a joke. Yeah, I know that. This is the royal baby. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
Anyway, the doctors have uh, apparently warned uh, Kiki that the uh, birth could be very painful because there's a one in four shot that it's going to have Prince Charles's ears. <laughs> Yeah, you, you're thinking about your moose right now, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the media from all over the world are camped outside the hospital. They're bored silly. They're desperately waiting for something to happen. It's like the studio audience here right now. <laughs> but it shows you how people uh, the world over are excited about the royal baby. Even Al-Qaeda is like, OMG, the royal baby is so cute. <laughs> That's, they, they put that on their Twitter. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Do have Al Qaeda have a sweater? Yeah, they might. Yeah, yeah the, the real Al Qaeda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're they're verified. Yeah, they're verified. that's right. They're verified. The real Al Qaeda. <laughs> oh my goodness! I cannot believe it. Look at me. I got the blue check. I'm somebody. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Buckingham Palace announced that all British-born uh, babies, you know, on the same day as the royal baby, you know, born on that day, you know what I'm trying to say here, <laughs> they will receive a special limited edition silver penny from the royal family. I'm like, well, thanks, royal family, a whole penny. Whoa, how generous. <laughs> Why not something people could actually use, like a DVD of Downton Abbey or something? Or, <laughs> or Gibraltar, perhaps. <laughs> Greg, was that some kind of, never you mind what that was. <laughs> All we do here is goofy, dirty stuff. Or do we? Anyway, a lot of British celebrities have recorded well wishes for the birth. Michael Caine phoned up and said, Oi, let me know if you need a hand, royal baby. I know my way around a boob or two. <laughs> and that other uh, great British celebrity, Madonna, called in. <laughs> Good luck, mate. All right? <laughs> That's Madonna. Yeah. That's Madonna. You, yeah. you can do Madonna's voice. Yeah, right, it? yeah, mate. Yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Elton John might write another song. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would write one of the. <laughs> Seems to me you had intercourse and your sperm fertilized the egg. <laughs> <laughs> now you're having a baby. Maybe you could name him Greg. <laughs> if, if it's a guy, or even if it's not. That's a really good song. Thanks, man. <laughs> ah, man, Elton John will never come on this show now. No, he's... No, no. He wasn't going to come on anyway, no. was he? <laughs> Let's be honest. He told me. Were you a fan of Elton John? Yeah, you love Elton John, right? How come horses love Elton John so much? What's the deal? You just like the way he plays the piano? I don't. I have no idea what he's saying. What is he saying? What the hell is he doing? What are you doing? Are you playing the piano? You're playing the piano with your chest. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I'll get a piano sent over there. If you can play that piano with your chest, you, Mister, are getting a pay raise. Yeah. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Everybody. We'll be right back. Good, man. All right. You know what we should do here, like this part of the show? What's that? Like, we, before we do the tweets and emails yeah. and stuff, we should do a commercial. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if we had something to advertise, this would be the time. <laughs> yeah, like they used to do back in the old days. Yeah, yeah, you know when they yeah. would say, hey, you know, this product is excellent. Well, like, a, like a fake, like a fake conversation. Like... Right, right, exactly. So I'd be like, oh, mm. Ooh. Wow, that's a tasty beverage right there, Jeff. Is that right, Craig? What are you drinking? Uh, this is uh, called mush. Mush? <laughs> well, tell me more about it. Well, I can't for legal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what? Enjoy the great taste of mush. <laughs> Oh, that's subjective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, no, no, come well, on, man. Well, I'm just doing a commercial. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, uh, what time is it, Jeffrey? Peter? It's tweet mail time. Time to take advice from a man who got jet lag and his brain has turned to mush. <laughs> 
Always mush yeah. up here. <laughs> uh, not always. It was a time in the 80s. Anyway, yeah. there. I understand. I understand. Um, yeah, you want to do the tweet and email? Yeah, Jay? yeah, why not? Okay, then. Yeah. I'm going to do it as a play tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it as a play. Like, uh, like I'm an inspector, and All I've right. discovered it's time for tweets and okay. emails. Right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good idea, though. Yeah, you it's must a good admit. idea. It's You're, a good yeah. idea. You must admit. You must admit. Yeah. All right, you ready? You're an inspector. All right, I'm an inspector. Police inspector. Yeah, all right. A police inspector. Work with me here. Come on. It's like one of those improv shows where they yeah. make stuff up. Right, right. Yeah. We would never do that again. No. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Time for tweets and emails. <laughs> Great Scott! <laughs> yeah, no, don't overdo it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was it. Yeah. All right. All right, this is from Cheech in New York City. You ever been there? Sure, yeah. yeah I tell you, that, that's a hell of a place, New York. Beautiful. The, the Bronx is uh, up, and the battery... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cheech says, uh, Craig, there was a man at, online at the airport behind me with a German accent, and I thought it was you. Sometimes, though, we do speak in German accents, though, in the show. This is true, Craig. This is very true sometimes. Sometimes when we are thinking about our favorite electronic seminal band, what's that they called? Oh, yeah, the Kraftwerk. Kraftwerk. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm singing to my friend Jeff, fan, fan, fan of their Autobahn. And sometimes I'm singing, we are the robots. <laughs> singing it. <laughs> Sing it again for my pleasure. <laughs> we are the robot. <laughs> anyway, uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't behind you at the airport speaking German. Oh, I might have been. I was in France. I've got so much jet lag. I thought I was German. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, from uh, Lawrence in uh, Mississauga uh, in Ontario. Mississauga? Mississauga. Mississauga, yeah. yeah. Dear Craig and Jeff, do either of you take a summer vacation yet? I was in France at the weekend. I don't know if I mentioned it. Did I mention it? Yeah, you, you mentioned it, yeah. It's lovely France, isn't it? Without yes. all that cheese. <laughs> oh, they've, they've, they've got... And uh, I got a new pair of pants. No, yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's they were terrific. I, got, I went to the store, and uh, the guy said... I said, I'm looking for a pair of pants. Something lightweight for the summer, I said. And he said, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> that's, that's how he said it. Well, no, he said it in French. Oh, I'm I just... See, I, I see. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you, glad you had fun. <laughs> this is from Liz in Menlo Park, New Jersey. You ever been there? Oh, yeah. That's Menlo the way to go. Yeah, Menlo. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> this is from uh, Amity. And, see, that's how uh, show business works, by the way. What I did there, I read uh, the name and then I threw it away. Yeah. I was mean. I was yeah. mean. And then the audience were like, ah-ha-ha! Yeah, yeah. You were mean! And I'm like, yeah! Cause I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy and I got mush for brain. <laughs> this is from Amity and Rendon in uh, Washington who says, uh, what kind of science education did you have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. <sighs> This is from uh, Missy in Missin Viejo in uh, California. You ever been to oh, California? Oh, beautiful place. Yeah, it's something, isn't it? <laughs> did you see this owl when you were there? Who? D I said, did you see this owl when you were there? Who? <laughs> the audience is laughing over. Did you see the owl when you were there? Who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I tried to set you up, man. It's all right. Yeah, all right. Uh, that's actually Missy right there. She's now. Yeah, she... Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, everybody, I've got a jet lag. <sighs> anyway, uh, we don't have time for Missy's uh, email. Oh, that's fine. All right, so here it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited to see you're coming to Comic-Con. Uh, Want to get a taco while you're in San Diego? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Not like an owl taco, right, Jeff? No. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> Jeff, take over for a bit. Yeah, our friend Craig Ferguson is a bit winded right now. <laughs> Who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got talents, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> my first guest tonight is the host of two CBS uh, talk shows. Who? Two. Two. Uh, she does The Talk, which airs every afternoon, and then Big Brother, which airs every Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday, just all the time. Um, <laughs> take a look at this. <laughs> it's always bad when you get uh, then in your pail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your move, man, it's on prime time. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Julie Chen, everybody. Julie Chen. Say, may I say something very complimentary about your look this evening? It's very nice. Thank you. It's got a real kind of. <laughs> no, I like this. Is that thing. Webster's? Oh, yeah. Thank it's you. Lovely. It's the color. The, the color. The color in the shoes. The wow. Thanks. They're kind of sandaly, but they've got. Gladiatory sandal. Well, gladiator isn't where I was going to go, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's got a touch of the performing arts about them. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the, the Big Brother looks like that's uh, terrible when you get more in your face than in your pail, isn't it? That you are so naughty. So you've been off for two weeks and you're just raring to go. Oh, that is not true. <laughs> I was here last week, all new. Oh yes, that's right. Oh, that's right. All new, original, never before seen, not taped ahead of time. New. No. I. Uh, I was I was in France for the weekend. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, have you ever been to France? Yes, um, I was just there on a little family vacation. It was very really. Nice. Yeah, I like to pick my destinations based on food, right? So you know you're going to do great in France. Oh yeah. You're going to do great in Italy. Of course. You're going to do great in China. You know, gonna India. Do, India. Yeah, India. Is fantastic. Yeah. That's true. I haven't gone there yet for food. Um, you know, <laughs> so I'm getting there. But um, I was thinking, because I know you spend a lot of time in Scotland. Being I do, Scottish. yeah. Well, I, I am from there originally. But what, yeah, <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But food-wise, what do you have to offer me if I go, right? Haggis. Yeah, see, that's why I haven't gone there yet, so. Yeah, but I it's not only haggis, haggis. First of all, haggis is okay, right? And like, all that joke, everyone's like, oh, haggis. Like, knock it off, because haggis is fine. Like, uh, okay. you're Chinese. It's not a bird nest soup. You know what I'm saying? It's haggis. <laughs> Chinese. I'm not quite sure what the comparison is. So well, that's what I'm saying is, if, you know, the Chinese people eat uh, bird nest soup. Yes, yes, Scottish yes. people, you know, it's they leave the bird nest in the trees, to be fair. <laughs> that is true, too. Right. So you're, you know, what I'm saying is you're in a glass house throwing stones about haggis. <laughs> and, and, fair enough. <laughs> and the, uh, there's other things. There's Cullen Skink is the name of a thing. Oh, now, what is that? It's a oh, fish. Wait, Cullen? Cullen Skink. Skink or Skink? <laughs> With an A or with a E A? Well, it depends if you want soup or something else. But the <laughs> Cullen, Cullen Skink, Cullen Skink is the name of the soup, and it's a uh, hot fish. It's like a chowder. Oh, so then why don't they give it a nicer name like Cullen it's Scotland. Chowder? <laughs> is that a but Cullen it, Skink? It's also, in, in in Scotland, Cullen Skink sounds nice. Oh, it does. <laughs> 
course it does. Would you like some Cullen Skink? I'd love some, thank you very much. <laughs> that sounds like something if you don't like your guests, you offer them. Well, but... in Scotland, you don't like your guests. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's a different thing. Tell me about the Big Brother then this year. You, got, you had to put a disclaimer on it. It's crazy. Yeah, well, well. first I have to explain the clip that you showed. If someone doesn't watch Big Brother and they see Howie. Ooh, who, who, who would that be? <laughs> How, Howard, who is the African-American man who was throwing the pail, he was trying to throw that competition. He did not want his team to win oh. because his teammates uh, for that particular competition, yeah. they were three women who many people consider the mean girls of the house. Oh, I see. So he didn't want to win it. Because well, of course, I, I knew all of this. Right, of course, yeah, I, I know you know this. I'm just catching other people, right, right. people up, up to speed. But it is, it's, it's always crazy in the Big Brother house. This year, it is more tension-filled and more like good guys versus perceived bad guys than ever before. You know, there's always like, okay, we're the cool kids and we're like the not so popular, but we're sticking together. This year, um, race has become an issue and it has gotten very ugly. Well, it's, 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 it was uncomfortable to watch for me last night. Really? Oh yeah. I, I, I've, I've said it on the DVR, so I'll see you later. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> see, you didn't know where to go with that one. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, well, race is the big, uh, is the hot button right now. You guys been talking about it on the talk? We've been talking on the talk, you know, it started with the Paula Dean story, oh, and then today with Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. the verdict, and it's then... It's why I didn't say it's a great day for America tonight. I can't, I couldn't say it. It's no, like, I, I agree. Yeah, it's not, it's not. But I did notice, you said you weren't going to curse anymore. Yeah. And then you slipped before, and you... Yeah. So, what? Wait, for, what is the motivation behind you wanting to try and not curse all to right. begin well, with? Let, let, let me explain this. First of all, you think you know me, you don't know me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Clearly not, because I would have never expected yeah, that. that's right. Well, actually, you I see, would have. You didn't see that one coming. That's <laughs> no, right. It's very non-Scottish of you. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, and the other thing is that, you know, I can't live even by my own rules. I find it very difficult to set parameters and then follow them. Rules are tough. Very, very difficult. But I've got children, so I try and do that. You, Charlie's what age is he? He's like Charlie three? is three and three quarters. Right. And he, for the first time yesterday, I, we heard him say the F word. Yeah! It was... Yeah! And you don't want to laugh. He doesn't know what it means. I it mean, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> truth. Okay, so truth be told, my husband and I take him out for ice cream. And I'm sitting in the back seat with Charlie in his baby seat because it's the first time we took him out in like a convertible. So I'm all like, right. all right, fingers and toes inside and everything. So I'm like, you know, the overprotective parent. So my husband's driving in the front and let's just say... Um, Is that how Les drives, by the way? Because I'd be <laughs> careful about that. Like, and, so, going to the ice cream store. <laughs> how you doing back there? No, so let's just say... Um, something happened that involved another car mm. and words were exchanged for a moment and a, who, who, who a was woman, it, you or Les? No, Leslie, because he's behind the wheel. Les cost? Well, the other, the woman pulled up next to us and she screamed outside of her window. She was like, ah, learn how to drive, rah, like really ugly. So, you know, it, it hits your crazy button. So my husband happened to, in his retort back, say the F word. So, I'm shocked. I know. I, it's like so not him, right? Well, right. I've never heard him cuss. And so... <laughs> you, by the way, if you don't know, uh, Julie's husband, uh, Les Moonves, runs CBS. <laughs> and He's he, kind of his gang. <laughs> but that's why I never cuss, because Les never cusses. <laughs> no, no, no. And, so our son hears this for the first time, and he just hears emotion, so he repeats verbatim what came out of my husband's ah. mouth, and it was like, ah, no, go, run, you, and I'm like, and I'm just like, and I don't want to laugh, but I want to laugh, and my husband looks in the rearview mirror, he goes, that's right, daddy said a bad word, daddy said, oh, daddy said, and we don't have, like, a, a cussing jar, because he's three and a half, he doesn't know what money is, you know, he doesn't get an allowance, so I said, uh, next time we go for ice cream, you don't get gummy bears on top of your ice cream, and... Who, who Les or the, the... <laughs> I, I... 
Charlie to make gets an example. Charlie gets the gummy bears. Les doesn't get gummy bears because listen, you you're opening up a world of pain if Les doesn't get gummy bears <laughs> on his ice cream. And there'll be real cursing. Yeah, yeah. Now. Like, you know who'll get it? Me, me. <laughs> Cinderella on late night. That's the one that'll get the trouble. It was on your show. that yeah. This story was told. So, you know, I'm trying to make a point with my son, mm -hmm. and my son starts bawling because he knows he said oh, it too. Dear. And I'm like, no, 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 we're acting like we didn't hear him say it because he kind of just looked out the, the window to say this, right. kinda, you know, and I'm like, oh, no, no, you didn't say it. Daddy says it. He doesn't get the gummy bears. And he thought about it, but he knew he said it, and he just couldn't stop crying. Oh, it is I making me so sad. Yeah. And I was like, here are all the gummy bears you want. Well, <laughs> and that's a great thing to do with your kids. When they show any uh, negative emotion, give them stuff. <laughs> Parenting one whole month. Yeah, yes. that's it. You learned it here. CBS Cares. We'll be right back with Julie Sand. Julie Chen, who's just told me who's one big brother this year. <laughs> See, now I know you don't watch it every night. Why? Well, is there no winner? No, there is a winner, but like Survivor. No, right. but Survivor Amazing Race, they have the winner established before they go on the air. But Big Brother happens live, so the great thing is I don't have to, I'm terrible at keeping secrets, so I don't have to worry about revealing who wins. Because right. We, you genuinely don't know? You, it's like, no, because it happens live <coughs> in September. That's yeah, but do. do you kind of think, like, do you help it along a little bit? Like, you know? Uh, that would be illegal and cheating. <laughs> Remember Quiz Show, the movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that illegal? Yeah. Is it illegal if I try and like, you know, help somebody do well here? Oh, you mean when you do the $50 in quarters? I never used to, I don't do that anymore, but you can have it if you want. I still have that in my cards. I love it because, you know, when you don't have money for the meters, like, yeah. of course I have money in the meter. I don't have any in my purse. But the meters take cards now. You got money. Come on. Yeah, girl. I know. Come but on. I'm old school. I'm old school because it's like, I feel like that they automatically take $2. They do. And that, I'm like, I'm like, but I only need 75 cents worth. So. Do you know what happened to me this morning? I went to uh, the, uh, this place where I go and get coffee, and I went to put the thing in the meter. It already had one hour 50 left. <gasps> you I was felt like, like, yeah! I know, it's those little things, it's just, yeah. Yeah, I was like, take that, difficult childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's all better now. Yeah, it's fine now. See? No more therapy for me! <laughs> See, it does get better. Yeah, it does get better, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're out of time, uh, which is a shame, because I adore your company. Um, not so hey. much that Les would get annoyed at me, but enough, you know. Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I would always give you here. gummy bears on your ice cream, though. I... <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> now you're in trouble. Why? I don't know. I felt like saying that. Because <laughs> I could always cut it out. Oh, no, I can't. We're live. <laughs> Ow. See? Yeah, I know. See, if Les had done that, the desk would break. Oh. <laughs> now it actually would. Now you're back in his good graces. Yeah, no. Is good. He's kind of like Chuck Norris. <laughs> you know when uh, people make Chuck Norris jokes? Like, you know, Chuck Norris. Yeah, what happens? It, Do no. you get, like, th get found in someone's trunk or something? No, 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 no. Chuck Norris is fine. It's just like Chuck Norris is the example of, of everything that is strong and manly. It's just like, you know, what's the difference between Chuck Norris and, you know, something really strong? Nothing. <laughs> See, I'm not very good at jokes, is what I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. It, if it came down to Chuck Norris versus Jean-Claude Van Damme, who is your money on? What is it for? Uh, making out or fighting? <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> um, make out Chuck Norris, fight Jean-Claude Van Damme. There you go. All right. <laughs> Julie Chan, everybody. We'll be right back. guest is a very funny comedian. Who? who? Uh, yeah, but he's doing a Zany's Comedy Club in St. Charles, Illinois. I've done that club. It's, is that right? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, <clears throat> they got the thing and, uh, <laughs> actually it's in an old farm, this club, and you enter the club through the silo. <laughs> Anyway, he'll be there uh, Ju July 31st through August the 3rd. Please welcome Michael Palasak, everybody. Michael Palasak. Thank you. Uh, 
Thanks. <laughs> love is weird, you know, because uh, people love their family for a while. <laughs> and if they're married, they love their spouse for a couple years at least. <laughs> and it's the same word, but it's different. Like, one of my friends got a divorce. I was like, what happened? He was like, oh, I just didn't feel like I loved her anymore. Oh, I don't feel like I love my family sometimes. <laughs> but I've never been like, you know what? I need to find a younger, hotter family. <laughs> I've never been caught cheating on my parents. <laughs> Just come home late at night, my mom's been up crying, like, Michael, where have you been? You smell like a meatloaf. <laughs> My parents have been together my whole life, so I think I did a good job with them. <laughs> I asked my mom one time while that worked out. I was like, Mom, how did you know that that was the person that you wanted to marry, and that's when you wanted to get married? And she looked at me, and she's like, well, Michael, when you meet the right person, you just know. <laughs> oh, good talk. <laughs> What if I know and she doesn't? <laughs> like, hey, I really want to hang out more. Oh, I don't know. I just know. <laughs> Get in the car. <laughs> Our future kids are like, Dad, how did you meet Mom? I'm like, well, <laughs> I just knew. <laughs> So I took her. <laughs> and I kept her with me until she knew too. <laughs> and that's how you know when she's not gonna press charges anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Two of my best friends from college, they got married to their girlfriends like right after, you know, and uh, we were all hanging out one time. It's like the two couples and then me. I'm fine. <laughs> Not a big deal. And we were all hanging out and it was really fun. And then all of a sudden the one couple was like, we're having a baby. Yeah. And everyone was excited. I was excited that I could be there when everyone else found out so I didn't have to like it on Facebook. <laughs> But then it got weird. Then the wife was like, yeah, we weren't even trying. Oh, I don't need to know that part. <laughs> I just found out my best friend's going to be a dad. Does she really think my first thought was, oh, I wonder what the effort level was. <laughs> I feel like it would be rude to ask. <laughs> I hope she blurts it out. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that, you know? Like, we're having a baby. Ah, oh, congratulations. And we weren't even trying. Mm. <laughs> Way to go, slackers! <laughs> to be honest, I didn't even know exactly what that meant. <laughs> I didn't know that you could try more than you were already trying. <laughs> They're like, super bonus days. Like, <laughs> I had to have a separate sex talk with my mom as an adult, thanks to these friends. <laughs> And if we're gonna be really honest, they were kind of trying a little bit. They were trying. Like when I go to bed by myself, that's not trying. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.